for the most part with the ensemble methods that we've been talking about so far, we've had uh, very fixed heuristic methods for combining the predictions that are being made by the individual ensemble members in order to create the prediction by the, uh, by the entire ensemble. So, so if we're dealing with classification, we have some sort of a fixed voting scheme where every ensemble member gets to vote with equal weight. In the case of uh, regression, uh, the simple uh, heuristic is just to average the uh, predictions that are made by the individual ensemble members. These uh, schemes really ignore the fact that some models are actually better than others at making uh, predictions. The one exception to this fixed blending type uh, scheme is this boosting idea where we're explicitly uh, computing, at least in eta boost, we're explicitly computing that alpha parameter for each one of the ensemble mem members. And, and this alpha actually uh, does uh, a weighting of the different ensemble me members, and we use that uh, for the, the last prediction step for, for the entire ensemble. But even this particular process of uh, weighting the different ensemble members is somewhat uh, heuristic in nature. And uh, another approach is to actually turn this into an optimization type problem. And, and this is the idea behind stacking. So the, the key idea here is that we train up a bunch of uh, ensemble members to make uh, predictions, and then we train a new model to take all of those individual predictions and combine them together in order to make one grand uh, prediction. The, the essence of the approach is to take our training set and to split it into two different pieces. We use that first training set uh, to train the individual ensemble members. And, uh, and then that second training set, which be because we've split our data is, uh, or at least should be independent of our first training set. And, uh, and we use that uh, to, uh, to train up the parameters of our blending uh, model. So a little bit more detail there. Uh, for the second training set, each model uh, in the ensemble makes predictions for, for each of the uh, samples in that uh, training set. And, and then those predictions are uh, presented to the new model that's actually doing the, the learning at this stage. So let's look at uh, a little bit of intuition here. All right, so the original approach with our ensemble methods was to have our training set So, so this is J along this axis here, which indexes the different elements of our training set. And, uh, and so one element of that training set is XJ, and that is uh, presented to some ensemble method that makes a, uh, a prediction, which is uh, Y, we're gonna call that Y hat one. And then we train up another model, F2, and that gives us Y hat two, and, and on down the line. And we might end up with, uh, say, big T of these ensemble methods. So that gives us a Y hat uh, big T. If, if we're dealing um, in the regression side of things, uh, what the the ultimate blending function does. So I'm going to call this uh, uh, big F. This is just a fixed function that computes an average of our different Y's to produce the ultimate uh, prediction Y. And, and actually I'm, I left off uh, the J index from each one of these. So training set entirely uh, is used in this scheme. Training set entirely is used in this scheme to, to train up all of our individual ensemble methods. With this new method, 
the stacking idea, what we do is cut this training set into two different pieces. So we'll call this T0 and uh, T1. And it's T0 then that gets used to uh, train up the individual ensemble members. And with using whatever scheme that, that we're uh, using, uh, so in particular, we might, uh, for F1, we might end up subsampling T0 even further. Uh, so that's uh, uh, that, that subsampling technique that we've uh, talked about a number of videos ago. And, and then F2 might get a, a different subsample uh, from T0. Once that training process is complete, then so that, that's really step one. Once that step, step is complete, then we take uh, T1, and that is used, that is passed through uh, each of these models in order to, uh, in order to make uh, predictions for each one of these Y hats. But note that our parameters for each of our ensemble members these are uh, held constant. So, so then uh, that those predictions then are uh, provided as inputs into uh, this model here, which now has its own uh, set of parameters. We can call those uh, Ws. And uh, we uh, use the data from T1 uh, in order to set up the in order to choose the parameters for, for W here, where we're asking uh, F to translate between the, the, this set of predictor predictions into the ultimate prediction. And of course, it's trying to, to match that Y, that true YJ. It's important for T0 and T1 to be statistically independent uh, of one another. Uh, if they're not, then you run the risk of uh, this big F uh, in some sense, overfitting the uh, uh, the data, and and in particular by having these statistically uh, uh, independent uh, samples that are coming from uh, T1, uh, if uh, any of these ensemble members, or maybe only a subset of the ensemble members, don't really do very well with that particular training set element, then uh, this big F can actually learn that those particular uh, ensemble members are not really uh, to be trusted, either in general or for a particular region of the input feature space. And so in this way, this secondary uh, model, big F, can actually be a lot smarter than any of the heuristics that we've uh, chosen, especially these very fixed averaging kinds of uh, heuristics. All right, so, that, so that's the, the general idea uh, behind stacking uh, with the tools that you have already in scikit-learn. Uh, it's relatively easy to uh, implement uh, a, a stacking procedure. There isn't anything that's specifically uh, built into scikit-learn, uh, but uh, the, the key elements, of course, are all there. This wraps up our discussion of ensemble methods. Next up, we'll start talking about unsupervised learning techniques. And in particular, we'll get into dimensionality reduction methods, both on the linear side and the nonlinear side. And then we'll talk some about clustering.